Well, good evening. This is a new uh, new thing I'm working on. This is an Altec 417 uh, that was reconed in 1990. Uh, with an Altec 917 recon kit because uh, Altec discontinued the 417 cones uh, and the factory recon kit for the 417 was the 917. Well, the problem is the 917 is a much heavier cone by about 30 or 30% or so. Same voice coil, same voice coil winding. This one's on uh, an aluminum former. And the originals were a craft paper. Actually, no, I'm, I'm not sure. This was... Huh. Actually, uh, 4178H was aluminum with capped on insulation. So, edge wound, edge wound copper ribbon. So, yeah, we're good here. There's the uh, flux density, 13,000 gauss. This one was about uh, 10,500 when I got a hold of it. So, back to this one. Why is it here? Well, uh, it was reconed in 1990 and put on the shelf, and it had a voice coil rub in it because the voice coil was out of round. It should never have been shipped back to the customer in that condition, but uh, 34 years later, it's with me now. So what am I doing? I'm... going to use this cone which is about eight grams lighter than the 917 this cone is actually uh, a cone meant specifically for a PAS G1280 G1280C, which was PAS's answer to a guitar speaker. And then it was to change the name to MB1280C later, uh, but it was the same speaker. But this one has a, kind of a curvilinear profile to it, and it's about eight grams lighter, so it should it should uh, get up higher because the 917 just kind of dies after about 5,000 hertz, and it's really not suitable for guitar. Uh, why do I know that? Well, because I reconed one a long time ago with the 917. I said, well, that just sounds terrible. So, when I was uh, getting into it, I noticed that the gap was not even. It was, the pole piece was off center by about uh, three, two or three thousandths of an inch. So I had to figure out how to take it apart and discharge the magnet and uh, was able to get it apart. Now I got to shim it back together because the gap is 53 thousandths and this is ap happens to be 53 thousandths of uh, shim material that I've used for JBL uh, magnet recentering. So I'm going to uh, put the pole piece back in and shim it up and see how we go. So We'll do this in multiple steps, and hopefully we'll be successful. All right. See you later in Chapter 2. All righty. Here is uh, Chapter 2 on the saga of this uh, Altec 417H, uh, 417H. 8A, I think is what it is. Anyway, it's a 417. <laughs> later. Later model. So I got the magnet realigned. Uh, charged up. 
Let's recap. I put new terminals in it. I took this terminal set off because they're not very good. The hole for the wires pretty small. It's only like 18 gauge. So I replaced it with uh, the H.H. Smith that Electro Voice and, and JBL used, used in the 70s and 80s. They fit just fine with the insulated shoulder washers. So these will never break, never. I say that with confidence because these are bulletproof. And the solder lugs. So next, next step is to install the cone assembly, and it'll be kind of a kind of a modified 417, but uh, it's going to sound better than what it was when it came in. All right, stay tuned. All right, what is this? Chapter uh, three, I guess it is. The speaker, these 417, I guess I'll call it a 417 plus, has been reconed after the motor magnet was torn down and the magnet, the gap, pole piece realigned, gap realigned. Test voltage, nine something volts. Flux in the gap, depending on what <laughs> gauss meter I use, can be either 11,600 or 12,200. Factory spec, according to the spec sheet, is 13,000, but it's not, so the, it uh, it just can't go that high because the magnet's magnet's not big enough to get it to go that high. Uh, this one, when it was reconed previously, it had a 917 recone kit in it. Moving mass is about a difference of 8 grams, so this, this one is about 8 grams lighter. And being that the magnet was discharged a little bit, uh, the frequency response dropped off like a rock at about uh, 5,000 hertz, 4 to 5,000 hertz. So here we go. I can hear it all the way up to about 10K. So it's good. It's, uh, I think it sounds better than a 417 because the 417 was kind of hollow and nasally sounding. And this one really isn't. Uh, I think the curvilinear cone has something to do with that. So it'll be closer to kind of a cross between an EVM 12 S and a JBL uh, K120. All right, see ya. And it's, it looks good.